Welcome back, it's Steve, and uh, we're going to talk today about Cognitive Processing Therapy Session 1. This is a follow-up to my overview of my mental health journey that I hope all of you got to see. Um, this is going to probably be a little bit difficult for me to walk through, but I'm okay with that. Um, so let me just tell you a little bit about CPT real quick. It's it's an evidence-based therapeutic approach to address the disorders that you have, the challenges that you have, that you face with PTSD or, you know, it's, it's specifically we're going to focus around PTSD, but it can be leveraged in many different ways. Um, this is my experience. I'm not a doctor. I was a patient. I was not a doctor. So this is just my experience of, of what happens in each one of the sessions and um, what homework you should expect. And I'll tell you little things that I learned along the way that, that may help you if you're considering going down this path. Um, so with that, this is my CPT folder. This is everything we went through in 12 weeks. It's a lot. It's pretty heavy. Um, <clears throat> be prepared to do some work is basically what I'm saying. You're going to have to do the work in order to get the best out of this. And the work is going to get, <clears throat> excuse me, the work's going to get repetitive and it's going to get old. So um, let's talk about the four components of CPT, right? The four components, it's four components that are education about PTSD and the cognitive model. So that, you know, teach you a little bit about what PTSD <clears throat> is at its foundation and um, how it fits into that cognitive model. Exposure to trauma memories. This is your, I'm gonna look back and <clears throat> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna walk through it. And walking through it is tough. Um, personally, my experience was that I, I lost someone in the service who I was, that, that, that I considered a mentor um, and that I would, I had a good solid relationship with this, this person was an officer. Um, I was enlisted. Um, they, they helped me through, uh, some of my immaturity <laughs> when I was, when I was newly into the military and, you know, saw past some of the mistakes that I made, uh, during that time. And so, you know, this person just became one of those mentors that you just don't ever want to get rid of. So it was tough. It was tough for, uh, it was a tough loss. And, and there were other things that happened along the way as well during my military service. We've all seen it happen. We've all been witness to accidents or we've all been witness to, you know, some type of combat scenario, some type of um, fear-based uh, feeling going through either, you know, for me, it was going through the Straits um, uh, into you know Dubai and Abu Dhabi and, and Kuwait and that area. Um, there, there was a lot of stuff that went on, um, you know, uh, just all kinds of junk that can that can really hit you up. So, I'm looking at this. This right here is session one overview. This is a handout. This is the first thing that they give you, um, but. So the two components so far, education about PTSD and the cognitive model, exposure to trauma memories. The next one is identifying and challenging stuck points. Remember this, identifying and challenging stuck points. You're going to do this for about 10 out of the 12 weeks. It's, it gets to be repetitive, but repetitive is what really makes the difference. So stick with it. And then the last one is learning to reframe and modify unhelpful beliefs. So basically reframe things that you're thinking wrong. Like for me, um, I thought that I was, there was a component where I was personally responsible for some of the bad things that happened while I was in. Um, specifically, you know, I, I was, well, what if I was in charge of this person's equipment? And what if I was the guy that he was, you know, with? What if I was in what if, what if, what if? And I what if myself into a wreck basically. Um, so trying to manage those thoughts 
and then you know manage the uh, identifying where some of those things are, some of the things that really get to you, um, some of the things that trigger you, trigger your PTSD, trying to get to those and get that done as well. So <clears throat> let me step through the things that we're gonna accomplish in session one. First one, building report and trust. Establishing trust, this is critical. Um, I'm gonna tell you flat out, if you don't have an ability to be fully transparent and vulnerable with your counselor because you don't have that level of trust with them or you don't think you're gonna be able to build that level of trust with them, get a new counselor. Do not stick with somebody that you're not comfortable with. Both of you have to be comfortable in order for this to work. So make sure that you're going after exactly what's going to help you. I can't, I can't really express that enough. Um, I was fortunate. I was assigned a, a, a counselor who um, we we hit it off right away, and uh, you know we we built that rapport over the first few sessions, and then you know we were off to the races. And um, as a matter of fact, it's CPT for me has been over since uh, November, October, November of um, 2023, and I'm still going back and visiting with him every once in a while. So get that building rapport and establishing trust, establish that trust. If it's not there, get a new counselor. They're not gonna be offended by that. Nobody's gonna be offended by that. And it shouldn't matter if they are offended by that. You have to have trust for this to work, okay? Second thing is the, the the therapist or the counselor will provide you with psychoeducation about PTSD. Um, basically the psychology of PTSD, what's going on in there. Um, the, the, first, the first phase really aims at attacking your symptoms, um, normalizing your responses to trauma, making sure that you know you, you are connecting the dots in the way that they need to be connected, quite honestly. Third thing you're going to do is called introduction to the cognitive model. The, the counselor is going to explain all of the things that go along with the cognitive model, the CPT model. So they're going to talk about, you know, they're, they're going to give you some, some insights into how that process maybe manipulating your symptoms, um, how that process will help you manipulate your symptoms or identify them um, and, and be able to move through them, right? So the next thing is you're gonna identify and you're gonna discuss the treatment goals. When you're identifying and discussing treatment goals, there's a couple things that I will just wanna tell you right away. Number one, your PTSD is not going to just go away. It doesn't work like that. You're gonna learn how to cope with the triggers. You're gonna learn how to cope with the symptoms. You're gonna learn how to um, really push yourself through those memories because you're not gonna lose your memories. Memories are gonna be there. Those feelings are gonna be there. It's how you respond to them that you're gonna learn how to control. So um, that's, you know, <clears throat> that's the big thing when it comes to your goals. Make sure you're good with the goals being what they are. Um, make this a two-way conversation. Everything that we're doing right now is a two-way conversation. <clears throat> it's not the counselor, just the counselor talking, because if you don't get involved, you're not going to grow from this. And I can tell you it works really well. Um, fifth is setting the expectations for treatment, right? Um, the expectations of what each session is going to have in it. And there's going to be a little bit of learning in each one. There's going to be some, <clears throat> excuse me, handouts and some, you know, diagrams for you to look at. And then there's going to be all kinds of other stuff that we're going to get into in just a minute. But they're just going to go over and, you know, set your expectations for what this is going to be like. Now, let me set the expectation again. This is not a simple process. This can be very difficult. Uh, there were parts of this that were extremely difficult for me 
and I'll cover those parts as we move through this. And I'll cover some of my frustrations with the process as well. I understand it better now, but at the time I didn't. So um, I took a lot of notes because I just really wanted to be able to share this experience because I knew that it was making a change in me. And my hope is that it'll make a change in, in another veteran or somebody else dealing with PTSD. Um, when you're getting to addressing your concerns and questions, ask questions, ask questions about it. If you're like, Hey, wait a minute, how much time is all this going to take? And, and what is my, what is the expectation of what I'm going to do, et cetera, et cetera. You need to uh, ask those questions up front because this is a commitment. So make sure you do that. Homework assignments. You will have homework every week. Um, a lot of the times it will be daily homework. You'll have to set aside 15, you know, 10, 15, maybe 20 minutes a day. Um, a couple of the day, a couple of the weeks, a little bit longer, but um, you'll have to make sure that you get that homework done. And the homework is key to driving toward the end of this treatment and getting into a place that is much better for you. Um, it was a place that, you know, we drove into it for me and, and after all the homework that we did, I looked back and, and was like, man, I, I need to, I need to film this. I need to tell people what this is like, because I don't know that I've ever seen a patient come out and just talk about what it's like. So let's talk about the homework for session one. Session one, you're going to write an impact statement. You're going to write a detailed statement about the impact that your traumatic event had on your thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. Um, you're not going to write what happened. You know, you're not going to write, well, you know, my lieutenant commander, you know, had an accident and all of a sudden I thought it was me. No, you're going to say after the event, we're going to call it the event, right? After the event, this is how it affected me. For me, I couldn't go near airports. Um, it, it terrified me to go to airports. I would sweat through my clothes at an airport for no, no understandable external reason whatsoever. It could be four degrees in the airport and I'd sweat through my clothes. Um, thoughts, feelings, behaviors, um, a feeling like something bad's gonna happen. The, the behavior of avoiding things because of it. You're going to write out a detailed statement about this and it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy. It's going to be worth it. It's not going to be easy. And when you write that out, the goal is that you will be as thorough as possible. And I'll tell you why. Sorry, it's time for a glass of coffee. I said glass of coffee. Um, Next, you're going to do an automatic thoughts log. This is keeping a daily log of negative thoughts that automatically pop up in your head related to that event, whatever that trauma was. And this is going to be very insightful if you're completely honest and open about it. And again, vulnerability is key here, right? So you're going to write out the thoughts. Well, I, I should have done something better. Man, if only I'd have had this happen. I don't deserve to be here. That's a big one that happens, and I think that happens for a lot of us. I, I, it should have been me. Or, you know, why did this happen? This is messed up. Why didn't they die? Why didn't X? There's a million things. There's thoughts and thoughts and thoughts that can go through your head. I filled up every bit of a college ruled paper just in this thoughts log. It was a little eye opening to see how often I had these thoughts because when you stop going about your day the way you've normally done it for a while, you start to pay attention more. When you're writing these thoughts down, you go, man, I just had that thought. And then, you know, it could be 20 minutes later, it could be the next day, it could be an hour from then, it could be two days down the road. You'll have, you know, four or five more thoughts and you'll think, man, I got to write these down. Um, be thorough, right? Write all of them down. Even 
the ones that are scary to even think about from time to time, and even the ones that you don't think have any relevance, but all of a sudden they seem to make sense. For me, low-flying aircraft. Low-flying aircraft over my house when I don't live near an airport, I take notice of. Um, it used to be a big trigger of mine. It's still kind of a trigger of mine, but again, I have the tools to cope with it now. So those are your big homework assignments for session one. So the keys to session one, establish your rapport, know what to expect out of this training or out of this, this process um, therapy, and then start down the road of healing. Ask every question on the planet, ask those every single session, and we'll get into it more and more. Here on my, my paper here, it says, please write at least one page statement on why you think your most distressing traumatic event occurred. You're not being asked to write specific details about this event. Again, you're writing about how the, how the event affected you, not the event itself. Um, Write about what you have been thinking about about the cause of this event. Also, consider the effects of this, this event had on your beliefs about yourself, others, and the world in the following areas. Safety, trust, power and control, esteem, self-esteem, and intimacy. And intimacy is not necessarily just physical in nature. Intimacy as in I'm, my ability to get close to other people. Um, bring the statement with you to the next session. Also read over two handouts that they give you on PTS, PTSD symptoms and stuck points. Stuck points are going to be, oh, one of your favorite things to do. I, I got to the point where I was burnt on stuck points by the time I was done. It was not something I enjoyed writing down anymore. Um, but after I completed CPT and, and I kept all of my worksheets, your counselor should give you a copy of all your worksheets. Um, even the ones you've filled out, they should go make copies, give them to you. If they don't, ask them to. Make sure they're giving them to you. Keep track of these, because you're gonna look back on these and it, it's, very, it's a very good positive thing to do, to go back and look back on these things and look at where you were when you started writing these stuck point statements and where you were at the end because there's a drastic difference that I noticed. And, and my hope is that you'll notice one too. All right, so that's session one. Um, session two, we'll film in about a week and we'll just take it from there. All right, thanks everybody. Take care, we'll see you soon, bye.